So what if you are the first generation to live beyond your lifetimes? Alchemists are people who turn raw material into gold. For centuries, alchemists have searched for the secret of eternal life. This desire, no matter how powerful for immortality, has always just remained out of reach. Who could blame them for searching? Who here among you, at some point in your life, has desired to be younger? You see it all around you. Everywhere you look, what do you see? This product, it'll make you look younger. This one, you're gonna live longer. Be a better lover, be a better person. I mean, come on, these are the messages we see everywhere, right? And it's not just a modern obsession. As a species, we've always sought to transcend our physical bodies. And each generation has created alchemists, the artists, the inventors, the innovators, who have used the cutting edge technology of their age to create images of ourselves that somehow capture and preserve our essence. But not all of the technologies have stood the test of time. Here's a really good example. Does anybody know who this man is? Anyone? How about this man? The man on the left is perhaps the most famous performer of the 19th century. Dan Rice. Now, Dan Rice was actually so popular in his own day that he actually ran for the presidency in 1868. <laughs> the man on the right, perhaps most famous performer of the 20th century. Now, could it be we all know who Charlie Chaplin is, but we have no idea who Dan Rice is? It's because Chaplin's career coincided with the birth of a new technology. That's right. The movies. That's right. Motion picture technology captured Chaplin's image and projected him around the world for millions of people to see. More people than he could have ever met in person. Now, 40 years after his death, we still recognize his image, but we may be the last generation to do so. Why? It's because his image and relevancy has been set by a 20th century technology. So as 21st century alchemists, what is the cutting edge technology today and what does it allow us to do that was not possible before? Well, what if you could stay forever young? This is not a photograph. This is a 3D computer generated avatar. Okay? It's what we call maximum resolution. We have stopped time and reverse the aging process, okay? Not only can we record the way the surface of your skin looks, we're able to record and calibrate how your muscles move underneath your skin. So that way, your digital avatar can perform exactly the way you do. This is actress Fan Bingbing. She's the most famous person in China, okay? perhaps one of the most recognized faces on this planet. And she's an early adopter of new media. She understands the power of having a 3D digital avatar that can speak to younger generations. Today's icons, movie stars, pop stars, and celebrities will be able to connect with future generations beyond your lifetime on new media platforms that we can only imagine. What if you can change the way you look and appear as someone else? Well, when we digitally reconstructed President Obama <laughs> and put uh, Donald Trump in the Oval Office alongside him, we didn't quite think that uh, reality would follow virtual reality. So. Uh, Maybe virtual reality is more powerful than even we imagined, right? That's right. I mean, talk about power. You know, we used advanced render and performance capture technologies to allow actor Harry Shearer to play both presidents in real time. I mean, this has been a dream of his for years. <laughs> right? Slip into the skin of somebody else 
you know, use your imagination to bring them to life. I mean, he's put words in the president's mouth. Talk about power, right? But this might as well be you. You can step into the Oval Office. You can have a look around. You don't have to go through security or deal with Secret Service. Right? And who knows? Maybe you could even hang out with the president. So what if you could step into anybody's shoes? Here, we teleport you back to Abbottabad, Pakistan, May 2nd, 2011. You are now standing in Osama bin Laden's compound. Now, we can put you in the boots of one of the Navy SEALs that were there, or we can put you in the shoes of bin Laden himself. Virtual reality allows you to be there in person and experience this moment for moment as it played out. But more than that, you can actually experience it from any perspective. That's right. As far as we know, there are no recordings of this event. So we had to reconstruct this through the accounts of the people that were there. Now, even if they had a camera to record this, it would be the partial perspective of the person looking through the camera. Now, you get to experience this. You get to solve this. You get to figure the puzzle out yourself. And you could look at this from any perspective. Okay? You can make sense of this as if you were there. Now, what if the place and the person whose skin you are about to slip into is not even real at all? Okay, this is Grace. Now, we created Grace. Grace was born from our imagination. She's uh, part human part machine, but 100% computer generated. Now, Grace lives in a virtual forest in a fantasy world. And in a fantasy world, we get to play with who we are and who we could be. Now, the distinction between reality and virtual reality still exists, but I'm not sure how relevant it is anymore if you can interact and form an emotional connection to somebody from your imagination just as easy as you can somebody from real life. That's right. Now, we've been creating versions of ourselves for a long, long time. It's what defines our species as unique. And every generation has deemed this important. Who we are, historically, culturally, this has been captured by media technology for tens of thousands of years. And by looking at how we use that technology to reproduce ourselves, we've been able to understand who we are, where we've come from, and where we could be going. And the images of ourselves that have stood the test of time, um, they use the cutting edge uh, technology of the age in which they are created. They used often precious and rare materials. They were made to last. Okay. The frescoes, fresco is part of a the fabric of a structure that is built to last for millennia, far, far beyond the lifetimes of those who created it. And artists who have failed to create a technology that allowed their work to be permanent have disappeared along with the images they've created. Artists whose images have lasted, they were the alchemists of their age. They were the ones who have found the magic formula of permanence. And these images that we create of ourselves are not just copies of ourselves. They're not just a facsimile. They contain an idea of who we are, okay? Uh, what we hold to be important, true, worth preserving. That's why they're painted on stone. They're carved out of rock. They're enshrined in bricks and mortar. The cave painting here, it depicts the hunt, which celebrates our survival of the species. Now, the fresco, well, that speaks and talks of our relationship to what we call God. And we see narratives of who we are. Chaplin's tramp connected with millions of people around the world, different cultures and different languages, because he embodied our humanity, our hopes, our dreams, the perseverance of our species through the human universal expression of laughter. Now, here's the paradigm shift. All the alchemists that we've been talking about so far, they've all used material that is physical 
matter. And as alchemists of the digital age, we get to step beyond the physical constraints of the world and step into the realm of unlimited possibilities. You are now in a world where you are living. The digital world is real. It's living, it's evolving. You are now no longer just standing in front of an image. You are no longer just watching a movie. It's you in the Oval Office, standing with the president, interacting with the president. And the images that you take away from these experiences, they're just as real as any memories that you might take away from real life. Just as real and just as powerful. The images that you experience in the virtual world are just as real as the images that you experience in real life. Now that is digital alchemy. Finally, the promise of permanence. But what of ourselves will we preserve? Well, uh, alchemists, what do they do? They take raw materials and they create gold out of it. In the entertainment industry, it makes complete sense to make digital avatars of our cultural icons because their economic value will no, lo no doubt increase because we can make them any age, we can put them anywhere, they can exist on any media platform now or a media platform in the foreseeable future. We will immortalize that which we have always preserved. Our heroes, saints, and gods, the icons that have inspired us to be better humans. And as these technologies become readily, readily available to each of us, we'll be able to capture something of ourselves to pass on to future generations. Imagine your children, your grandchildren, your great-great-great-grandchildren being able to interact with you in a meaningful way long after you have physically passed away. That's right. Is this an evolutionary leap or just another step? Time will tell. What do you think? Do you think you'll be the first generation to live beyond your lifetime? We do. Thank you. <laughs>